Hi, my name is Karina. I run the sewing channel Lifting Pins and Needles and I am visiting today at the Wardrobe by Me YouTube channel to show you my freedom dress and I am excited to share my version and also some sewing footage for you to enjoy that will complement the sewing instructions you will find in your pattern. If this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Karina. I live in Brazil. I've been sewing for over 30 years and I'm very passionate about it. Also very passionate about sharing with you all the tips and tricks I've learned along through three decades of sewing. I like filming everything that I sew for you so you can see exactly how things are done. And Christina, the owner of Wardrobe by Me, has invited me to create a sewing video for you all about the new Freedom Dress. You might have seen the Freedom Dress already in your newsletter or on the website. I'll give you a little summary about the features. Basically, it's a dress designed for lightweight woven fabrics. You can choose all the flowy types like rayon, tensile, crepe, silk. Some that are lightweight also, but a little bit more structured are cotton types like cotton lawn, cotton voile, cotton gauze. I think those are fabrics that will work really well. I would not suggest you make this out of a quilting cotton or wovens that are just too structured. Otherwise, your gathers will come out a little bit too bulky. I'm talking about gathers because the style of this dress has gathers and those are one of the main features. But I'll let you know a little bit about the bodice. You can see on the image on the screen that the bodice is the same for all your options. There are side bust starts there for shaping and all of the options have a curved placket on the center front, slightly narrow with four buttons there. And to finish the neckline on the top, you can choose a collar band, which is a simple collar here on the top, or a tight band, which is longer. You can tie it up as a bow and that goes attached to the raw edge of the neckline instead of the collar piece. Those are the options you have for the neckline. As for the sleeves, you can finish the sleeveless with bias binding. There are instructions for that. Or you can add different types of sleeves. There is a regular long sleeve that has an optional tab that you can sew in so that you can fold it up and wear it shorter if you want to. Or you can sew a bishop sleeve. The bishop sleeve is wider at the hem and you can hem it normally and it will just fall on your arm or drapey. Or you can attach a facing that acts like a casing, thread an elastic through and get a really nice gathered look here on your arm. This sleeve will hit your elbow depending on how tall you are. After the bodice that hits the waist, you will have options for the skirts. They are all tiered and you can choose between one that has three tiers or one that has two tiers. The dress with the three tiers will obviously be longer than the one with the two tiers. They are meant to be around the midi length, T length, depending on your height. And if you want to customize the length of these skirts to make them longer or shorter, you can easily adjust each of these tiers to get the length that you prefer. The great thing about sewing is that we have preferences and we can sew according to those and making adjustments of how long or short a skirt is, is very simple. You will find sizes 0 to 24 US available, the equivalent to 30 to 54 European. And the fit is intended to be semi-fitted here on the upper chest and bust. You will have about two and a half inches of positive ease there. And then at the waist, that's where it gets nice and comfy and roomy with about eight inches of positive ease. And then there is a lot of ease at the hips, obviously, because of these gathered skirts. In the pattern, you will find detailed body measurements, finished garment measurements, and how long these dresses are. With the three tiers or the two, you can choose there what is your preference. You will find a lot of information there both in metric and imperial. If you would like to learn more about the experience of sewing it as a consumer myself, you can head over to my channel at Lifting Pins and Needles. I will leave the link in the description box because there I'll give you a more detailed review of my fabric choices, my fitting adjustments, all those things. Also there you can see a completed lookbook so you can see the dress on. But now let's go into the sewing. The aspects I've chosen to film for you are how to sew that curved placket. Very interesting, very interesting and fun to sew. I've also chosen to sew the collar, the bishop sleeves with the casing slash facing that has an elastic. And you will also see a very complete overview of the pattern pieces, the notches and general sewing construction. So let's hop into the practical segment of this video. the 
front bodice piece there is a side bust that there that I've marked with tracing paper this is the back and it's cut on the fold here you have single notches to match with the sleeves that will notch on the back this is the collar piece there's two and they're both interface they have notches on the top and notches on the bottom and these are the placket pieces these will be the ones that will be sewn onto the center front right there you can see there is a curve there that matches the curve right there you have one pattern piece for these plackets and you cut two pairs so there are four of them here you can see I've got two pairs that are mirrored mirrored means that they look like this they look exactly like each other this is the bishop sleeve it is a shorter length you can see how wide it is and the curve of the hem right here this is the hem facing, it matches the same shape at the bottom and you have notches along the bottom to match right there. This facing will also be a casing where you will thread elastic through and it will gather this at the bottom. There are notches on the top to match to the armhole, double notches for the back, single for the front and to match the shoulder seam on the top. There is a regular sleeve option that is long with optional sleeve tabs so you can fold it up or you can also finish the dress sleeveless if you want to with bias binding. For the skirt that goes attached to the bodice you have two options one is to have a three-tiered skirt and one is to have a two-tiered skirt I've chosen the one that ends up with a slightly shorter dress so this is tier one and this is t3 that goes sewn together you can see that this tier is wider than that and that's because this will be gathered onto that then that waist up there will be gathered onto the bodice and this will just be for the front and I have the exact same for the back over there so you cut two of those on the fold two of these on the fold for the three tiered skirt you have a separate pattern piece for the first tier it's got a different shape it's, you need to choose what skirt option you want and according to that you choose the tiers that you are going to use I always prefer a shorter dress so this is why I've chosen tier one and tier three to sew together to form my skirt <music> These are the placket pieces that will go on the center front of the bodice and you can see that they are curved it will match the shape of the neckline on the center front and we have two pairs both of these are interfaced both layers the first step is to sew this inner area of the plackets together the same place where you find the notch we sew them together with 3 8 seam allowance the seam allowance for the whole blouse is 3 8 of an inch and here too Where that notch is, you do a small pivot. There is a little angle there. After sewing these two seams, we need to flip these and turn them to the right side, but first I'm going to trim these seam allowances smaller. As we are putting this placket together, it's a good idea to keep both pairs mirrored to each other all the time so you don't get confused and end up making two exact same plackets. So we can see that they are straight here and then they curve out right there. They are mirrored right now. I'm going to open them like that and I'm going to understitch now this seam. Always keeping them mirrored on one of them, I will push the seam allowance down. The seam allowance is going down and on the other one, the seam allowance will be going up. That means that I will have mirror images of these and one will be for the left side, one will be for the right side. The side that is going to be understitched will be the one that will be inside and the one that's gonna be smooth is going to be the exterior layer. So once I've pinned my seam allowances going in separate directions, you can see that one going this way, one going that way. Now I'm going to understitch there on the edge. For understitching, I use this practical presser foot that allows me to move the the needle to the left and sew right on the edge otherwise you can just use your normal presser foot and just try to sew really straight there on the edge that's how that looks and when you fold these together the inner layer will be the one with under stitching and the one on the outside will be smooth so I'll repeat the same on the other side After stitching both plackets you can see that they are mirrored 
I've got the under stitching on both sides like that. I don't have identical plackets. Now you will have one side that is not under stitched. It's just smooth right there. And the stitching is on this side. Same as on the other, they are mirrored. On this smooth edge, you need to go to the iron and press it in by 3 8 If you want to be a little bit more exact, you can do a guide stitch with the sewing machine. Just a straight stitch with a long stitch length. Use, I'm using a 5.0 and that can be removed after you have pressed it in and it will just help you press it in neater. Now I'm repeating on the other side. This is the side that's not understitched, so the seam allowance is going that way here. After spending some time at the ironing board, this is what we look like. We have mirrored plackets. This is the edge that was folded in by 3 8 and the guide stitch is still there. This is very easy to remove. If you choose to do this extra step, you just pull the top thread and you just start pulling it through. It is a long stitch length, so it will come out very easily. Once you pull out the top thread, you can just remove the one that's on the bottom like that and it's gone within a second and it's left you with a perfectly creased edge and very exact at 3 8 So I'll remove this on this other side as well. You can see that the top edges of the placket have this shape. This is because it's been drew to the shape of the neckline. So these are the sections that will go on the top and that will continue down the front of the bodice. This edge that hasn't been folded in is what is going to be sewn onto the center front of the bodice left and right and we'll do that next. What we have here are the two front bodice pieces. I've written a W with chalk on both so you know that we have wrong side of the fabric facing up towards us. And we have the placket pinned right side to wrong side. The side of the placket that was previously folded in is right there. It's free. We have pinned the raw area there. I've done that on both sides. Remember I, I mentioned that the top of the placket had a funny shape. That's because it's been true to this round neckline on the top. So now we just sew this at 3 8 seam allowance, both of these. Remember there is a curve here on the front. You need to pin just going around the curve, it's very slight. One of the first steps prior to this was to sew these bust darts, so that's been done. I wanted to show you what this looks like when you pin the top of the placket to the neckline. You can see that you have a pointed edge there. When you look at it from the other side, it needs to protrude, hang off a little bit, but at the seam allowance of 3 8 they need to meet right there. That is how this is going to match later. On the front edge that has that slight curve right there, I'm going to take a little bit of the bulk away from the seam allowance like this. You just cut a small triangle from there just to reduce the bulk on that little curved edge. I will also reduce the width of the seam allowance just by a hair. We are looking at one of the bodice sides from the right side of the fabric. The wrong side is under there and we can see that this placket has been sewn onto the edge. Now we need to go to the iron and press the seam allowance towards the placket. And then this edge will just come and cover that seam that we've done. And this is where we will top stitch the edge of the placket down. And we're doing this from the right side of the garment. By the way, before putting on the placket and doing everything, I had already stay stitched the edge of the neckline for the front and the back pieces. Just for your information, that's one of the first steps. After hand basting this placket on, now we are going to edge stitch this. Remember, this is the right side of the garment. You are going to see what you're doing. What you sew here will be visible. And at the back, the placket has already been sewn on in the previous step. So that is the seam that has already been done. Again, I'm using my blind hem presser foot that allows me to move the needle to the left. The metal guide will go against the seam and this will allow me to sew on the edge extremely neatly without having to think much about it. 
this is how the placket will look on the outside it will have the edge stitching there very neatly on the inside you will have two stitches that edge stitch that we just did there is right there along the seam that had already been done prior and we have the under stitching there that we've done previously that holds the placket inside so it's very very neat this hand basting was done further away than what the edge stitching was going to be there's no catching these loose threads so it can come out very easily and that is how the placket looks and now we repeat on the other side this is the wearer's right side bodice and the pattern has four buttonhole marks for you to do vertical so the buttonhole will start there and go down there start there the buttonhole needs to be centered over that placket placket is quite narrow After finishing the placket, doing the buttonholes, you can sew the shoulder seams. Those have been sewn and serged, the seams pressed to the back. The neckline had been stay stitched prior. You can see the stay stitching there that will conserve its shape. And now it's time to sew on one of the collar pieces. We have two collar pieces. They are both the same. They are both interfaced. You will see the curved edge on the top and there's a notch close to there. And there's one down here, both sides, both layers. We are going to sew one of these first to the neckline and then the other. We have the neckline extended and we have the fabric right sides up. You can see the shoulder seams there. We also have our collar piece. We have marked the center of the back neckline and this pin is marking the center back of the collar piece. You will see the longer edge on the top and then the curve coming down here. This is the edge that you need to pin to the neckline. This notch there will match the shoulder seam. That notch will match the other shoulder seam. We will match the centers first and start pinning all the way to the edge on both sides. Over here, you need to have 3 8 of an inch protruding from the placket piece like that. This notch will match the shoulder seam. The shoulder seam is pressed towards the back. Everything is matching the collar piece to the neckline. Everything matches beautifully. So we've pinned half. Now we pin the other half. Remember to leave 3 8 of an inch protruding on this side as well, like this. This is how we are going to sew the other layer of the collar. This notch will also match the shoulder seam on the back. This is the other collar piece. It hasn't been pinned onto anything yet. And I'm just going to prepare it to have it ready to be sewn on later. When you look at the collar piece, you have the curved edge along the bottom edge here. I have done a guide stitch again with a long stitch length 3 8 seam allowance and this will be pressed in before sewing this other collar to the one that's already pinned on the neckline so I will have that ready to go I've just prepared it now otherwise we will sew now this collar piece onto the neckline everything's been pinned and we will sew this at 3 8 seam allowance remember there is 3 8 protruding from each of the center fronts there where the placket is already done Next step is to trim the seam allowance a tad and then do several snips. This is a very curved neckline as you can see there and the snips will help this collar conform properly. Then we will go to the ironing board and press the seam up towards the collar. When I go to the ironing board I will do that step and also do this that I'm ready prepared for which is folding the bottom edge of this collar in by 3 8 The guide stitch is ready. And then I can put this collar piece together with that one. Here we have the collar piece that we haven't sewn on yet. And it's been pressed in at the bottom. I've removed that guide stitch. I will also trim the seam allowance and make it narrower. Here we have the collar piece that's already been sewn on. We are looking at the garment from the right side up. Here are the shoulder seams. On the other side, you can see the seam allowance has been pressed up trimmed, snipped. We have 3 8 of an inch protruding from each of the sides of the plackets from the center fronts. And now we are going to take this second collar piece, lay it on top, 
match everything up right here from the edge you will find the notch here that will match the one on the other side so I'll go ahead and pin this collar piece all along the top here you can see everything matches on the side this is why we had that extra seam allowance say so 3 8 that's the edge of the placket and it will curve go all the way across and then finish the curve on the other side so 3 8 seam allowance around this I'll just be really really careful to get an accurate curve with the correct seam allowance if you are new to sewing these types of collars sometimes it helps to draw the seam allowance exactly with the curve there so that you can follow that when you're sewing I think that helps I have hand basted these so I don't have to deal with pins Take this curved area very slowly. I even hand crank a few stitches just to make sure I'm accurate. You can see that the stitch there goes right on the edge of the placket but not catching it and then it curves with the correct seam allowance. Now we can remove this basting stitch. As I've been doing with all these seam allowances, I'm just making them a tad smaller. On the top of this curved area, it helps to cut out little notches, like little triangles to reduce the bulk there on the curve. Now that we have both collar pieces sewn on the top, we can bring this collar to the inside of the garment. We have the bodice wrong sides up, there you can see the edges of the shoulder seam. Now this inner collar will match the seam right there. All along the edge, I've already pinned it there on the curve and we'll just pin along and after pinning all this neatly, I'll hand baste it and then all we need to do to finish this collar is sew along the edge right there. Here is the collar all hand basted there on the bottom. This is the inside, I'm looking at the garment from the right side of the fabric and this is the side where I'm going to be top stitching. I want this edge to be very neatly top stitched because this is what is going to be seen on the front of the neckline here. This is where the placket starts. So I don't want to stitch from the inside because I might not get such an accurate result here from where I can't see. I have basted that on the edge and now I'm just going to start top stitching from about the middle area of the collar on the top. Edge stitch, come down the curve, pivot here, keep going and sew all the way around this collar. I'm using my blind hem presser foot that helps me sew on the edge very neatly. point after the collar and placket are done you can go ahead and sew the side seams I have already sewn those 3 8 seam allowance press the seam allowance towards the back and now we can get to assembling the sleeve piece we have the um, hole completed the sleeve will be sewn on the round the hem of the sleeve will be finished with a facing this is the facing it is curved just as much as this is and you will see on the facing that you have an edge on the bottom with notches and the edge on the top doesn't have notches. The edge on the top that doesn't have notches needs to be pressed in by 3 8 This curved piece will act as a facing and as a casing at the same time because then there will be an elastic threaded through. So needling this edge prior and folding it in is going to make it easier later when we sew these two together and you will sew them together like you would any sleeve matching these seams here on the underarm right sides together sew at three eighths the same you would with any sleeve only this one's a little bit wider We repeat the seam on the other sleeve and then serge the edge here we have both of the facings for the sleeves this has been pressed in on the top edge that doesn't have the notches. You can see the notches here on the bottom and I've folded them 
like that, right sides together. And now we sew these three eight seam allowance. And then we press the seam open here and knead in this so it's all folded on the edge. The sleeve has already been sewn, so we'll be attaching the facings to the sleeves on the round. That's how that looks when it's cleaned up. The seam pressed open and then the bottom seam pressed up. And now we can align this to the bottom of the sleeve following those notches right there. The sleeve is right sides up. You can see the notches are inside. Here we have the facing wrong sides up and we're going to slide the sleeve inside matching this seam from the facing with the seam of the sleeve. Match it there. And then we'll pin all along the edge. Here is a notch on the facing that will match the notch on the sleeve. You have three notches too much along the bottom. I'm sewing the facing to the bottom of the sleeve on the round using a 3 8 seam allowance, just a straight stitch all the way around. Repeat this on both of the sleeves. Here are both sleeve pieces completed. The underarm seam is sewn and the facing has been sewn onto the bottom of the hem. I'm going to reduce the seam allowance as always. It will just help turn the curves. I flipped my sleeve to have it wrong sides facing up and now the facing that's on this side will come into the inside. This will act as the facing and the casing. So I'm just gonna needle this up, press it. And then I'm going to sew this down on the round, leaving about a two inch gap and that's where the elastic will get threaded through. I have flipped the facing towards the inside of the sleeve and I have kneaded it out, pressed it and hand basted that on the top. Now I can top stitch that, I will leave a gap there to put the elastic in later. For the elastic I have five eighths of an inch, it's going to fit the casing with some wiggle room on the top and the bottom and I just measured this around my arm and I made mine a little bit loose so it's not actually tight on my arm. This is personal preference, you need to measure your arm and cut your elastic. After top stitching the facing down, I will use a safety pin and thread it through. This is the gap here where the elastic will be threaded in through later. I'll repeat on the other sleeve and then we can just sew the sleeve onto the bodice. Here we have the bodice wrong sides out and now we have the sleeves ready. I have turned the sleeves right sides out. The bodice is wrong sides up here. Now we need to slide the sleeves inside. Now here is a single notch for the front and here is a single notch of the sleeve. So this is a sleeve that matches this armhole. Put that inside and do the same with the other one. You have a single notch on the front arm side, you have a double notch on the back arm side, they will match the notches on the sleeve and then on the top you have notches to match the shoulder seam with the top of the sleeve. The sleeve is inside, the notches match, everything is good. There's little to no ease here so it's very easy to sew this on the round, you don't, you don't need to do a gathering stitch or any of that. One of the sleeves has been sewn in. When you look at it here, there's no pockets, no gathers, so it's all good. Repeat on the other side, serge the edges. Once that's all done, we'll be back for the last step, that is to put the elastic through the casing on the sleeve hem. I touched my elastic inside, made sure it's flat, that it's not twisted anywhere and I'm pretty happy. So I've closed it up, it's in there. And now I can just sew this little piece. I will insert some images here of the dress completed on myself. If you 
want to see the actual dress, me showing it to you, all the features sewn, and the lookbook that has me modeling it. That is separate content that I've produced for my own channel, Lifting Pins and Needles, as part of this collaboration with Wardrobe by Me. I hope you enjoyed seeing this video, and I might see you again on this channel as a guest. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you very soon.